Hunter called. He shot a buck from a stand elevated with a crossbow fixed blade, uh, two, two bladed fixed blade through the back strap down, um, towards the brisket. Arrow did not pass through, which so we think it hit brisket, so it might be steeper than this is showing here. Uh, the arrow was buried into it, stuck in the deer, and the deer took off running. And that was all information that we had from the shot. Alright, so here's the stand, and he was pretty much right here. Okay. So, that was about... Is she checking the right way? So he's here? Yep. Went up, up along the ridge all the way, dove down, and then started heading down that way. Yeah, she's winsome. Find it. Hunter was here at this red dot when he took the shot, and his buck ran out of this woods through some real, real thick brush up by this pond, and actually cut right straight back into the woods. About 15 yards from where the deer went down in. Okay. 15 yards more that way. Okay, there's probably a scent pull right here. We're gonna let her work her through it. Now, the hunter immediately tries telling me, hey, your dog was the wrong way. If you look at my track, my dog blow passes the first turn. This track is 22 hours old, 90 degree weather. And this is an area where the sun's hitting directly on short grass, maybe even just dirt, as you can kind of see around the pond here. So this is a really, really, really tough tracking situation or conditions for your dog. And uh, I tell him that it's probably a simple, that's probably not true, that's, I misspoke, but I'm going to let her figure it out and let her do her thing because I trust my dog. And sure enough, she self-corrects on her own and checks things out over here and gets back on the track. And she comes through this area really well, this bedding area here, <clears throat> and she goes right through it, no real problem. Is this the fence we crossed? Yeah, there's a, a spot of blood right here. It's been kind of the same trail you've been following, so I think I think it's you know going good. And then hits a fence, and I learned um, when my dog hits the fence, I learned really well that she's on the track because she is staring at me, kind of whining a little bit, looking at it, pulling at it. Um, just really eager to get across the fence at this point versus wandering off one way or the other. So I knew the deer crossed where she was at, which is awesome to learn. After crossing the fence, she comes into this field up here and goes right a little bit. I challenge her because these guys tracked twice now. They tracked um, right after the shot and then they tracked the next morning. The shot was taken at roughly 6 30 p.m started tracking at 7 p.m they tracked quite a ways at night and then uh after it got too late they went back to the house got some sleep came out the next morning and continued the track so when we got to this point and she made that right they were letting me know again that that was the wrong way so i challenge her she immediately comes back gets back on that track correctly goes back into the woods. Now here's the kind of cool part that I learned on this track was this is where the deer went. It's kind of on the right side of this figure eight she did. What she was doing was she was following the deer, dropping down in this dry creek, and kind of checking out the scent pool down here, and just making sure she didn't miss anything, hopping back up on it, continuing all the way back up here, dropping back down in the dry creek, I'm doing another check on this section and then continuing up where the track went. Now that's just from experience in my opinion. Um, I followed uh, one of the best trackers in the state and they kind of told me or showed me with their dog how their dog was in and out of simples like it's nothing unless it's really something crazy. So I'm hoping that'll get better with um, experience but for now I mean I let her do it and uh, didn't fight her on it because she's got to learn just like I have to learn. Uh, kind of goes in the field again, right back out of the field. 
This is kind of something we've seen a bunch on this track, which is kind of weird. Uh, but the deer kind of zigzags and straps down to this big section of creek right here. I believe the deer actually goes straight like this, like that. So this here, I don't think is a backtrack. I believe that my dog trapped down in this creek, the wind's blowing this way, simple again. Figures out where it comes out the creek at and just continues straight on a deer trail, follows a deer trail for 20, 30 yards, realizes that that's not the deer she was wanting to track, self-corrects again. Now, something that is awesome is she has self-corrected once. And that when I challenged her, self-corrected, checking these scent poles out, self-checked here, self-checked here, back on the track. This is actually the section, probably right around here, where the guys gave up the first night. So they tracked all of this the 30 minutes after the shot. I believe that this probably took them a couple hours, you know, three or four hours to track that. That's a good distance. I mean, you're probably looking eight, nine hundred yards. Uh, I'd have to actually get on Onyx and figure out how long that is to be accurate. But I'm getting a lot of blood here. I am past your last blood. Uh, no, just where we stopped last night. We probably have roughly the same distance, maybe a little bit less till last blood. 10 4. Right around this section here is the first time I see blood when I'm tracking. Now, as we're doing this track, they're calling out small specks about the size of a dime. And you would think that. If there was a hole in the bottom side of that deer, it'd be pouring out blood this whole way. So it's, it's not a good sign. But about the size of a football, I find blood right here and another section probably up here. And I'm like, hey, I'm finally starting to get some good blood. <clears throat> and they're like, yeah, we this is where we picked up the night before. Or this morning, when we started tracking. So they actually track. Um, so we continue the track with Diesel. And she's excited now, and she's on it, following it great. This is another bedding area. And comes out of the bedding area and walks the edge of it. Drops back down into the bedding area. And I believe that the guys pushed this deer when they were tracking either the night before or that morning. The reason I think it was the night before is we still have not found a bed with any blood in it or anything that shows that he laid down the, the deer we're tracking. So I think it was the night before that they pushed him. He probably stood here for a while, got a little bit of blood going, and then they pushed him. So right here is a dead doe from a previous year. Now, that's very common that a deer takes me and my dog over a gut pile. Did somebody lose a doe last year out here? Nobody from us, but this is we past our property at this point. Gosh, at least one over a dead doe that was dead last year over a dead deer, over dead squirrels, rabbits, whatever could be in the area. I think it's because if they feel like they're being tracked or traced or followed, they're going to take you to something that might be easier for you to eat. Because coyotes and their predators don't care what they're eating, they're just looking for food. So if a deer can take them to a dead rabbit, they'll probably eat that instead of chase the deer down. Giving that deer a chance to live. So, going over that, um, and it wasn't super fresh. Like I said, it was a year before. My dog went right over it, no problem. Pretty much at last one. Okay. Right in this section here is last blood. It's actually marked in the video on the top right, like in letter A. Uh, they kind of marked it with some trees leaning against each other, kind of weird, but it, it shows. So she goes right past it like it's not an issue at all and gets up to this fallen down tree uh, and 
scent pulls to falling over trees. So trackers, if your dog is working this tree, you know, give it time. It's not just distracted from a squirrel or a rabbit or whatever the case may be. I mean, that's still possible, don't be wrong. But um, she was all around this tree a bunch before finally picking a line and going back into this field up here. So we go in this field, jump another fence down to this creek, around a bend, right here I believe it was. Um, my dog puts her nose to the ground and starts licking and really interested in the spot. Uh, I believe that there was blood there at that spot, but when I'm following my dog, I don't want to slow her down. I don't want her to get distracted by me or lose interest because of me. So I, my job is to read my dog and then continue the track. So I carried toilet paper and I threw down a couple pieces of toilet paper right here. I tossed some uh, toilet paper down here by the street. Can you guys look there for blood? And radioed back to the hunters, hey, check this toilet paper spot for blood. And we continue the track and we keep going, keep going, keep going. We didn't have peroxide. Again, 90 degree weather, 22 hours later. They couldn't tell if it was, you know, red leaves or, or blood. Uh, they couldn't give me a definitive answer. She drops back into this field here, and I fully think she is still on the deer. Her behavior is still showing great. Her tracking behavior is still there. She's actually putting her nose into the ground like every six inches and really pulling the scent into her nose, trying to really get that hoof uh, scent in there so she can understand what's going on or make sure she's on the right deer. She's doing this like every six inches. Uh, you guys definitely tracked a lot farther than I thought you did. <laughs> With that being said, not seeing a bed, especially if you did hit leg, makes me worried. Yeah. Um, at this point, what I would do normally is reset her at that last blood spot. Um, we'll go back there and we can reset her. If she comes back to this spot, I mean, she's on it. Yeah. If she's, if he's came this far, and I haven't seen a bed with blood. I've seen a bunch of beds, but none with blood. I don't know if he's dead or not. Right. <clears throat> I asked the hunter what he was thinking and kind of broke it to him slowly, saying, if we went at this point 2.4 miles, absolutely no deer bed, very little blood. We haven't had confirmed blood since their last blood at 1.3 miles. So I'm telling him I don't think this deer's dead. Now, I could be wrong, the deer could be dead right here. That's something that I'm worried about as a tracker, and I'm terrified of leaving a dead deer. So I offered to reset her um, at actually the bean field, but I end up resetting her at last blood to see what she does. That's what this red is. Disinterest tracking here, does a circle, gets back on the line, you know, kind of went since this section, kind of quickly cuts it because she knew it, and tries to continue this way. So I reset her and stop her does this side kind of does the same thing when we start back on this track and the hunters could tell where we were they're like yeah i think we should call it and you know we got a long drive it's sunday night got work on monday this is our lease property not their house so at this point they kind of decide to call the track also uh thinking the deer's not dead after going 2.4 miles 1.3 miles was the last confirmed blood we went 1.3 miles no more blood went to 2.4 Still believe my dog was on it. Uh, the scary thing to me is, you know, what if 200 more yards that deer is dead and uh, we gave up the track a little early to my fear to leave a dead deer in the woods. But on this track, nine days later, we got confirmation from the neighbor who saw the buck running through one of his fields. And he knew it was the buck that they shot because there was still an arrow in its back. Now, if that deer dies of infection or coyotes or something like that, I have no idea. But it was still alive nine days later, running around still healthy. So if you guys could like, subscribe, comment, give me some motivation. Just keep doing these videos. Give me some pointers or advice what you think you should do or not do. Uh, tell me a story. I'll put you on the podcast at, you know, the Nose Nose Game Recovery and on our Facebook page. I'd love to hear your stories. Teach me a thing or two. So, appreciate you guys. Take care.